Welcome! Today's recap is of movie La Riffa, town's most beautiful girl named Francesca lost her husband Maurizio in an accident. She realizes that her husband has left her a mountain of debt to deal with. She had a young daughter Julia. Francesca decides to sell every asset she owns. Mauricio's only best friend Cesare tells her that everything including the car and the yacht has to go towards paying off her debts. Back home, Francesca is relieved to know that her housekeeper Rosaria is willing to work for her even without getting paid. The next day, Francesca visits her friend for a job at her store. She readily accepts the role of a salesgirl at the luxury store that she used to frequently visit as a customer. Her friends Carla and Serena feel bad for her when they see her working there but Francesca remains determined to work for Julia. Unfortunately, she ends up quitting the same day after being physically harassed by her boss. Francesca ends up selling the yacht to Cesare at a much lower price. Carla and Serena pay her a visit at home later. They saw her house empty because Francesca sold off her furniture when she tells them about her wish to auction the rest of her jewelry, shoes, and clothing including her favorite fur coat. They promise to organize things themselves. On the day of the auction, a lady specifically asks for a black dress she was wearing. Francesca drags the woman to an inner room to change out of the dress and proceeds to make an exit from the auction once she covers herself with a coat. Few nights later, a man named Enrico meets Francesca after hearing about her situation from Cesare. He tells her about his own loneliness caused due to staying away from his family. He goes on to praise her beauty heavily hinting at being physically interested in her and even offers to accept the responsibility for all her expenses. When she still remains unconvinced, he tries to lure her in by offering to get her a special car permit. Realizing his intentions, Francesca turns him down by pointing out that she doesn't have a car anymore. The next day her landlord informs her that she needs to find a way to pay the rent soon. She later meets a rich commander, who believes in displaying all the fakes and hiding all his original assets like priceless paintings and jewelry in the bank. In fact, even the stunning necklace he gifts Francesca is a copy. She considers for a moment that getting married to him could possibly be the solution to all her money troubles but the sight of his dentures drives all such thoughts away laughing at the entire incident with her friends. Francesca suddenly notices her precious fur coat in Carla's closet. Serena tells her that Carla caught a resale after Francesca's auction in a vengeful act. Francesca lures Carla's husband Sandro to her home and bullies him into buying her a new fur coat. After their love session, Francesca blackmailed him, Sandro gives in and buys her the coat she demanded. The next day, Francesca promptly sells her new coat to pay off the landlord's debts. She even pays Julia's school and gets herself a good deal on a second-hand car. Later, Carla meets Francesca to tell her she has to return the coat to the seller since they cannot pay the installments for it. She got angry when she is told that the coat is already sold. Carla informs Francesca about Mauricio's cheating. Clearly disturbed by the existence of this lady named Camilla, Francesca decides to pay the woman a visit the next day. Camilla tells her that she began seeing Maurizio about three years ago, but she had recently asked him to choose between herself and Francesca. She says choosing Francesca, Maurizio passed away in the accident. Camilla accepts that Maurizio made the right choice. Instead of feeling better from, she angrily flushes her wedding ring down the toilet, finally coming to terms that she can offer her beauty in return for money. Francesca contacts Cesare and tells him about her plan to set up a lottery. She declares herself as the prize of this lottery and says that she will stay with the winner for the next four years. By limiting the draw to 20 people, who will pay 100 million to enter the raffle, she provides fair odds for winning. Additionally, she also tells him that she will pay off her remaining debts with this money and will get her life back after four years. When Cesare questions her about what this lottery would ruin her reputation in society, she says that since Mauricio's cheating didn't affect anybody, she should also be able to act as per her wishes. She also offers him a cut from the proceeds in return. He made arrangements as per her instructions and also for not entering the raffle himself. After making sure everything is in place just as she asked him, Cesare takes her to a party one evening. Enrico finds her at the party and assures her that he will win her on the way back. Cesare tells her that the notary who helped him put everything together wants to enter the lottery along with his partner. Francesca reminds him that she will not accept a couple entry of this kind. When she meets the notary and his wife, 
they assure her that they are entering the lottery separately and that Francesca will not be disappointed with whoever wins. Francesca accepts this proposal, but she also accepts other strange requests too. One man wanted to see her from afar anonymously, while another showed her a video of what he would like them to do if he wins. Francesca's mother-in-law meets her one day and offers to let Julia stay with her in order to keep her far away from her mother's plans. Francesca angrily tells her that she does not have any right over Julia now, especially when she didn't bother to help them with handling their expenses and Mauricio's debts. Another man that wishes to enter the lottery turns out to be an old farmer living outside town. During their meeting, he calls Francesca a vulgar woman and throws her out when he learns that she is doing this raffle for money. Another day, Julia shows Francesca a board game gifted to her by Serena's daughter. Francesca clearly sees the intent behind the gift as the game is called the raffle. Next day, speaking to her, Francesca realizes that Serena was hurt because her husband Gustavo has also decided to enter the lottery. She tries telling her friend that she will reject his entry, but she drives away without listening to her. Francesca then heads to Gustavo's workplace to withdraw his name from the lottery. She reminds him that Maurizio was one of his best friends which makes his intent questionable. He reminds her about it not being an issue, since every single person in the raffle was Mauricio's friend. At yet another party, Francesca learns that Camilla has also entered the raffle and is confident of winning. She immediately asks Chazari to return everyone's money and cancel the entire event sensing his chance. Chase Ray suggests that this raffle is a possibility of a happy life. Instead of leaving things to chance among 20 unknown people, agreeing that he was indeed the lesser of the two evils and it is better to accept his offer, but they are interrupted by another woman. Seeing Kesar's true nature, Francesca leaves with the realization that she cannot trust anyone. On her way to drop Julia at school, Francesca runs over a man called Antonio with her car. After sending Julia to school with Rosaria, Francesca is left alone at home with Antonio. Despite knowing that he is a really hurt, she goes along with his demands. As they both realize that they have fallen for each other, they go out and spend the day together, at the end of which he confesses his feelings to her, she rejecting him by saying that they hardly know each other. Francesca gets ready to meet Enrico again that night. He informs her of his disappointment in having to withdraw his entry from the raffle, since he cannot risk his public reputation. Antonio interrupts their conversation and introduces himself as Francesca's lover. An angry Enrico drags Antonio away and his security beat him up. When Francesca finds him in that condition, he confesses his love to her once again. He drops her at night and finds that he is unable to leave without kissing her. The next morning, Cesare accompanies Francesca to meet an old man at his residence. Apparently, he wished to see her dressed in white. Before deciding to enter the raffle once satisfied, he pays Cesare in cash and becomes the last entry for the lottery. An extremely happy Cesare informs her that they are now ready for action. Over the weekend, he interprets the absence of a reaction from her as her excitement and nervousness for the raffle. But what he doesn't know is that Francesca was only thinking about her new relationship with Antonio. After returning home, she finds Antonio bonding with Julia. In her current situation, Francesca realizes that she might get just one chance to be with Antonio, since she would belong to someone else. After that, she engages in a love session with him at his place and later lays awake in bed sadly thinking about what her life has become. When Francesca leaves in the morning, Antonio hints knowing all about her raffle deal. He suggested that they keep seeing each other secretly over the next four years and continue the raffle for the sake of money. She knows that she put her trust in the wrong person yet again. Meanwhile, an anonymous tip about the raffle leads to a raid at Chase Array's office, implying that he could soon be facing several legal charges including gambling and unauthorized lottery among others. Later, he explains the situation to everyone who entered the lottery and assures them that he will save them all. He also tells them that Francesca will deny everything about the raffle when the prosecutor calls her. In accompanied by one of Cesari's staff, Francesca visits the prosecutor and accepts her knowledge about the raffle instead. She further explains that a few of Mauricio's friends got together and created the raffle to help her, and Julia commenting on Cesari's generosity. She also mentions that the prize of the raffle is the yacht that he bought from her, discussing how everything played out. 
Chase Ray tells others that Francesca may now have close to two billion, but she has managed to save every single one of them. While most of them are still grumpy by losing money over nothing, Cesare reminds them that it is better than being in prison for life. Francesca is the one who caused all the trouble herself and she was already on her way out of the country with Julia and Rosaria. Hit the like and subscribe to Famous Movie Recaps channel.